No, don't want that. So I want to refresh me. How do I switch this? <laughs> I think I on your slideshow, there's a presenter mode. Yeah, let's see. Or uh, you can go near the uh, the bar where you are able to uh, what do you call it? zoom in and zoom out. Uh, there's a square button. If you just press on that, that should. I think if you if you go to <clears throat> excuse me on your the screen it says from beginning if you just click from beginning all the way at the there we go the, and yeah. switch yeah okay that's what we're looking for there we all go. right thank you <clears throat> so there it is in black and white uh, Greater Merrimack Valley Convention Biz Bureau we're based in Lowell uh, and the Greater Merrimack Valley Convention Biz Bureau or GMV CBB saves on the breath. <laughs> it's the official destination marketing organization for the Greater Merrimack Valley. Uh, we're designated by the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism, MOT for short, to market the region as a premier travel destination for domestic international travelers, group tours, bus tours, meetings, conferences, and conventions and sporting events. Um, that's it, uh, plain and simple. Um, come usually July, we're publicly funded by the state of Massachusetts. We kind of just basically uh, complete a report, bless ourselves and wait for those monies to arrive. But uh, we also are membership based as well, but this kind of gives you a good example of all the towns and communities that we represent. Acton, Andover, uh, Bedford, uh, out to Burlington, Concord, obviously Lexington, Chelmsford, um, Manchester, as mentioned in Nashua, are members of ours. North Andover, Salem, Mass, Salem, New Hampshire, believe it or not, we've got membership there as well. Out to Stowe, Tingsboro, Waltham, Westford, Wilmington, and uh, what I wasn't able to squeeze onto the screen is Woburn as well. Uh, we have both memberships within the town as well as the town itself. Uh, there are or, uh, towns that, for example, Drake that has Old Homes Week that they uh, enjoy us uh, promoting through our membership database, social media, website. Um, again, uh, forgive the, a little of the um, disfocused here, but this kind of gives you an example of those uh, organizations that are members of us from Addison Gallery, American Art, out in the Andover, the Aloft in Lexington, the Andover Country Club, all the way out to the Holiday in Tewksbury. Um, we have a large, large uh, hotel uh, membership base, but Banks, Lowell Five Cents ba uh, Savings Banks, of course, Middlesex Community College, uh, UMass Lowell, and also uh, the Northeastern Satellite Campus in Burlington is now interested in becoming a member of us as well. These are probably the three of the most closest uh, university organizations um, that we're certainly advocating representing for as well. I had made mention that we are membership uh, driven uh, as well. We have a membership base. Uh, as I work on it right now, uh, networking opportunities starting uh, hopefully within the month of March, but definitely in the month of April, uh, we have reached out to um, hotels, restaurants, and attractions in the greater Merrimack Valley area and looking at hosting our, what I call our open house. Uh, and this is our ability to bring our membership to these locations. I can tell you right now that the Inn at Hastings Park uh, is going to be hosting, and also uh, Carol, who's over at the Concord Museum, which both uh, are going to be hosting as well, and um, the Weston and Waltham is looking at hosting, along with uh, the two restaurants here in Lowell, one is called Cobblestones, one in Chelmsford, which is Moonstones, so we sent out notice and ideally I try to look for kind of unique locations, but also the hotels want to promote themselves. And it's all about bringing uh, feed into these locations and having them um, become familiar. We do, uh, and one of the two main things of our membership that uh, benefits is it gets them the exposure onto our website. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, when I'm presenting to my board, one of the things that we have to do is our analytics to our website and social media. And uh, just last month, and a lot of times this has a, a lot to do with campaigns that we're running, 
but uh, just uh, last month we had over 6,000 new visitors to our website. Uh, and that's during what we all know is somewhat of the slow months, but there's a number of things that are going on in and around the greater Merrimack Valley area that's driving that. One big event is happening here in Lowell, which is called Winterfest. Uh, so that's been a big drive for us. Um, also exposure into our annual visitor guide. Uh, we distribute about 40,000 of those annual visitor guides. Uh, this past coming into the position, we've got a big arts community here, arts and culture. It's interesting, Aaron, you mentioned about arts and culture, and that is a big drive of ours right now. And that um, we employed uh, here in Lowell, there's a location called the Weston Avenue Studios. They're artist lots. Um, artists live there and or they have studios. So what we did is we took our annual visit guide, and I'll show you that just in a minute, but we employed a local artist and it's an original that she put on the front of our annual visitor guide. And those annual visitor guides get distributed, obviously, into hotels, restaurants, um, tourist attractions, uh, and uh, a number of other places, airports. So uh, we're looking at probably the release of our next annual visit guide will probably about 40 to 50,000 again as we continuously distribute those and make sure that they're in the eyes of those that are learning about the Greater Merrimack Valley. We do website advertising or e-blast. We just launched that as well. If you know of an organization that would like to benefit from our database, we can e-blast out um, promotional offers or opportunities there. Um, we have legislative ad advocacy, excuse me, early in the morning, I need a cup of coffee on that word, but uh, consumer email blasts as well and online calendar listings. We have a, a calendar on our website that when people are perhaps in New York and New Jersey and they wanna know what's going on in the area, they can go right to that events page and learn of what's going on uh, within the area. Perhaps uh, the Lexington uh, battle on the green, that should be something that we should be taking a look at, make sure that that's listed there or any of the events that are coming up in Lexington that can be listed on our website um, and let people know about events that are transpiring. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that we can do to help promote uh, as well as gain additional exposure uh, for membership. And one of the things that I've leaned towards is that um, you know, back when the world stopped, we stopped sending out our uh, invoices or stop uh, promoting membership for obvious reasons. Uh, hotels were closing, restaurants were closing, but we've reignited it. I think that at this point in time, we're probably about 110 strong in membership. Uh, and that was from uh, April of this year. So uh, we certainly feel a lot of people have definitely come on board. And we coming into the position, we did not take anybody off our website. We did not take anybody out of the annual visitor guide. We made sure because it's our responsibility to promote the region, even if they were not members, we made sure that they stayed up there and that we were doing our part to make sure that we're promoting them. So this is our annual visitor guide that was released this past year. And uh, a lot of what the desire was is that uh, coming into the position, one of the things I found is that it was very Lowell centric, uh, but what I, because of certainly our location and where we reside, but one of the things that I want to re represent is it does say greater Merrimack Valley at the top. And one of the things that I want to make sure got represented uh, is all the things that people kind of look for when they come into the area. Uh, these, uh, so we've got the falls uh, that are here in Lowell that are very signature, but this is a uh, Jack Kerouac. And uh, for those that did read the books in school, I must admit it was an education on my behalf and an exposure to who he is, but he's a native of Lowell and uh, he's, he has written a number of uh, books. He's an author. And this year we're hosting the 100th anniversary of Jack Kerouac. Uh, and one of the things that I found is that there is a huge international uh, following as well as Canadian following and domestic as well. Uh, but we will be hosting a number of events in and around the Lowell area uh, in honor of Jack. Um, we do also have the Lexington Minuteman and you see off there on the right hand side is the Henry Thoreau cabin. The lady on the bottom right, does anybody know who that is? And it was again an education on my behalf, but Betty Davis born right here in Lowell. So uh, and then this is a bridge on the bottom left and a uh, woman suffrage uh, right above that, the bridge they light up here on Lowell. And I tried to see if I could do this and I'm hoping I can do this correctly. Um, let's see. So if you, please let me know, are you seeing this come online? Are you no. able to? No. Sometimes if you're switching from one program to another, sometimes you have to stop sharing. 
and then uh, start again and choose the other program? Well, the link does reside on our website uh, to our annual visitor guide. And I'm back to the screen again, darn. Um, here we go, okay. But it, I tried to connect a link and show my technology uh, knowledge here, but clearly <laughs> my PowerPoint presentations need a little bit more. But the uh, visitor guide is being distributed and uh, the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism certainly helps us with that as well in the distribution. And we try to make sure it gets into all those that are looking for the Greater Merrimack Valley. You may or may not heard already, uh, this past year, um, we hosted a restaurant week within uh, the city of Lowell uh, because they also host a, what's known as a folk festival every year. And understandably because of the pandemic, it wasn't hosted. And we said, you know, we've got to do something to help stimulate the, the economy. Uh, so I looked into our history of our records here and it looked like, so, which such a diverse community, we have not hosted a restaurant week, similar to what Boston does uh, for the last, since 2016. Within a week, we launched it. And one of the two things that were the takeaways from the restaurant week here in Lowell is that the restaurants, there was about 12 participants that communicated that they could not escape the press because we vested about with the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, approximately $7,000 in marketing. Uh, we had food bloggers uh, out there on social media and we tried to land this information as much as we could. And the two things that the restaurateurs of the uh, Lowell area said is that they could not escape the press and that they never had so many new people come into their restaurants. And I thought, you know, wow, if we were able to set the template in motion with that, for just the city of Lowell, and again, it does say Greater Merrimack Valley, what we could do for the 21 communities that surround us, uh, some, for some of those that have been the hardest hit, right? Uh, so what we decided is that we set things into motion. We had plenty of time after this past restaurant week this last year, and we said, we're gonna do this for the whole Greater Merrimack Valley. In my road trip of meeting certainly uh, the, econ uh, the economic development people, as well as the town managers, one of the things that I had done also is that I physically uh, went into the restaurants in the area and or called them and uh, got in touch with the restaurant managers and or those the decision makers that would be interested in being part of our restaurant week. And we've launched it. I got the databases and I've already notified all the restaurants uh, in Lexington and all the other communities as well. Uh, the word is out and we're going to also be putting additional press out there and social media and what have you for those. And I do know that I'm probably going to have to go back to some of the restaurants because I'm sure a lot of names and faces have changed. Uh, but we're hoping that uh, and it's going to be based on certainly the participation of the restaurants right. Um, I've already been starting to notify by the restaurants certainly here in Lowell but Drake at Concord have uh, reached out to me. Westford has reached out to me as well. And all the connections and the links and everything are right on our website, not only for sponsorship, because uh, we're, it gives great opportunity for companies to uh, certainly partner with us on a sponsorship level, but also the restaurant's information is right on our website for them to go to. The one thing that if you're communicating this to anybody is up on the right-hand side uh, where it says become member, you click on that, and then that brings you right to where all the restaurant registration information is. Granted, it's not until April 25th, but we want to get ahead of the curve, uh, and it's going to be April 25th through Sunday, May 1st. And what we were targeting is that we want to make sure that we were in the right place after Valentine's Day, after Mother's Day, so that we're not bothering the restaurants, uh, and that we started April 25th when the patios all start to open up, which I thought was a great idea. And something a little bit different that we're doing this year is for members, uh, it is free. Uh, and for our non-members, we're asking for a $50 donation and that those proceeds will go to the Mer Merrimack Valley Food Bank. And I would highly recommend that if you have a food bank within your community, to have them connect with the Merrimack Valley Food Bank to become a partner. So that uh, as this campaign grows, that um, we can make sure that these donations are, are rooted into the right direction. Uh, but it, the Merrimack Valley Food Bank will be, uh, I think a nice gesture on behalf in connecting to this food festival. And, Get this going and this will be an annual event that we will do every year um, i do know that there are some restaurants that say you know what we, we thank you for what you're doing but right now we're having a hard enough time with the staffing issues but we're hoping certainly by april 25th that they'll be in a better place the 
other part of our responsibility is uh, publications, right? Uh, yes, uh, everything now is social media and uh, websites and things of that nature, but uh, partnered with Mass Office Travel and Tourism, one thing that we need to make sure is that we're pairing in, uh, publications. Many of the publications that we focus on uh, is some that you very well may know of, Yankee Magazine, uh, great, 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 great uh, publication to be in, has some great shelf life. Uh, some that I've learned that are relatively new, for example, is the East Coast Traveler, uh, which gets distributed through Maine, Maryland, uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, all those directions. And we're focusing on the publications that have a distribution of anywhere between 30 to 40,000. Uh, as some of them um, are less, we just don't think that there's enough of an impact. But uh, the Massachusetts Travel Guide is one that's produced by the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism. And we are in all of these publications. The Merrimack Valley, unfortunately, they've closed down, but we did get into their publication, obviously, because of the Merrimack Valley and a lot of the promotions. But group tour, that's something that's rather interesting that uh, I can share with you and teach travel. Uh, group tour and teach travel are focused on academic and senior travel. Uh, we're releasing these particular publications because the teach travel, and I'll show you a little bit further into the presentation, we participate in a number of different trade shows. And one of them is called CIDA, which is the Student Youth Tour Association, and it's academic travel. And uh, Sandaya, I can tell you right now, for example, Westford, uh, the, uh, the high school in Westford uh, utilizes an organization called EF Education. And they're an organization that uh, focuses on the high school trips. And as we approach uh, the end of uh, the end of July, beginning of August, we are going to be at the site of trade show, which will be in Washington, DC. And this publication, Teach Travel, will be distributed during that trade show and the greater Merrimack Valley will be represented and will also be a sponsor at the show. So, um, and I'm sure I, I can a little, elaborate a little bit more and Casey knows quite a bit about this, uh, of us recently doing a fam trip with uh, EF Education and brought them to Lexington. But uh, I won't uh, give out all my thunder just yet. So yes, we are in publications that have shelf life, that is good shelf life, that uh, we'll focus on making sure that, uh, you know, the Greater Merrimack Valley is a three season, uh, four season location, right? So we're all about making sure that people know that, you know, just don't come to us during the night season, making sure that they're coming uh, through all seasons. Uh, Here's yeah, something that uh, we have going on right now. I, we're working tightly, not only with uh, Lexington, but with Concord as well. Uh, we put out a uh, visitor guide uh, and uh, it's a nice piece that we put out there, uh, the Liberty Ride and then the uh, Inn at Hastings Park, uh, Walden Pond, all enjoy promoting within it. Uh, and we're going with a little bit of a different theme and certainly Casey can, uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. But, you know, a lot of people that uh, come into Lexington and Concord uh, or Lexington, they, they very well, because of the, the history, will be going to Concord. So the theme is more of, a, I think it's something like uh, two locations, one visit. And uh, as we elaborate a little bit more on this, but we're in the process of putting this together and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have it all together for a spring release and ready to be distributed um, to all the necessary locations, whether it be the hotels, restaurants, tourist attractions, um, and make sure that uh, people are learning and seeing about everything that both Lexington uh, as well as Concord has to offer. So I make mention that um, you know, we are a four season location. Uh, I found out recently that uh, in some of my trips coming to and from Logan Airport or Manchester Airport, I walk through the airports and I see Boston up on the advertisements and I see Springfield and I see Worcester and I see these locations. I'm looking for the greater Merrimack Valley and I couldn't find it. So uh, we have a fantastic ad agency and uh, this particular one is going up in uh, Terminal C at Logan Airport. Uh, four season location. Certainly we've got what's known as the Lowell Summer Music Series posted up there. Walden Pond, Lexington. These are the uh, rapids. Uh, believe it or not, there is whitewater wrapping locally that we can do. And of course, the Neshoba ski area over in Westford. But, um, and of course, the, the key thing is, is yes, QR codes are back. So this will be literally uh, a life-size uh, image that will be going up in the wall. And we're also looking at putting this over at Manchester 
airport as well, as uh, we have plenty of people that are coming in from those directions. Um, and the QR code will pull them back to our website, whether they be searching things in Lexington, but this I think has a, been a nice opportunity for us to uh, get additional exposure into the airports as travelers are coming back and forth. We also relaunched this and I just wanna make sure that everybody is aware of it. You probably, if you haven't already gone to our website and signed up for our newsletter, uh, we have a, um, what are you doing this weekend uh, that goes out every Thursday, Friday, and it gives our membership the opportunity to promote uh, events and or things that are going on in the area. You might be familiar with the Discovery Museum that uh, has gone on a renovation uh, over in Acton. Um, they're a member of ours. But we also have relaunched the monthly sponsorship eblast. And what that en enables the uh, membership to do is that if you have something that you would like to promote, you can literally buy the month. So for and granted, some of the months do have five weeks, but you would have sponsors, you would have priority position on our what are you doing this weekend email blast every Friday for the month, which I think is a great exposure. And our distribution get base not only goes out to um, our database, but we utilize other databases as well. So it's all about bringing people in from you know, act in Bedford, uh, Burlington, all the way up to Woman Wilmington and gather them. And it does, and I do know that this database does go out further out into Connecticut, New York, uh, down the Cape as well as people constantly, I would say probably within this last week, I must have seen about 15 to 20 people sign up to our weekly newsletter, which ties directly into this uh, sponsorship that we have going on. And uh, so we, this is a little promotion that we have put out there as well, so that people are aware of it. But uh, it's special, you know, again, special with events in the Greater Merrimack Valley, promoted to the entire week, dining, holidays, exhibits, cultural events, things of that nature, um, party position, social media spotlights. So uh, we just don't want that database to not have the opportunity to be able to communicate out to the Greater Merrimack Valley. And again, uh, the link is right on our website. If you click on become a member, um, you can go right directly to it and you can submit all the necessary information. Uh, there are the costs, there's a cost associated with a little bit more for the April, July, September dates, but um, we will certainly work with everybody that is interested in taking advantage of this opportunity. So we have this fantastic person, her name is Sylvia Kuna, who handles all our social media from uh, our website. Uh, we work with uh, Sperling Interactive uh, that did a wonderful job with our website and relaunching it. But uh, Sylvie does a wonderful job of our social media pages, whether it be the Facebooks or the Instagrams or TikTok or any of those. And uh, we had a Zoom call with her the other day. And one of the key things that I wanna make sure is that, you know, certainly we're engaging and we do analytics and we're engaging with uh, and I can see the age audiences that we're engaging with. But I said to her, you know what? Are we on TikTok? <laughs> and she said to me, you're not going to make me do TikTok. And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> so uh, we are now up on TikTok. Uh, and uh, we found that the audience, yes, the audience that probably ranges. And granted, uh, a lot of the social media was uh, a learning curve on my behalf. And I just recently signed up for TikTok and we're now um, promoting ourselves in our region on TikTok. And it is phenomenal, the analytics that are coming back from this at this point in time. We do two posts per week, Travel Tuesdays. We uh, post about CBB members, towns, any up and coming events. So highly recommend taking this notation down, but um, it's interesting because there's such a diverse crowd to TikTok and the engagement audience is short but we can see the analytics and it's another opportunity on a social platform for us to make sure that we're promoting the Greater Merrimack Valley. And I think, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think at this point in time, and I don't even think Boston is doing this right now, that they're up on TikTok. You know, there's plenty of bloggers out there, but I don't believe the CDB of Boston has approached this platform yet. It's, um, it's been interesting. And the audience that I think we're engaging at this point in time is a younger audience, but there's plenty of things in and around the greater Merrimack Valley that I firmly believe that we can engage them on, on to make sure that they're learning more about us and understanding everything that we have to offer. Um, so this just went out uh, as well, the Let's Get Together. Also, it, we're relaunching uh, It's Networking and we're reaching out to all our area communities and 
uh, these are some of the examples of the locations that are very much interested in hosting an open house. It's our opportunity to bring our membership to them. Uh, it's all about you know, feet on the ground and learning about who our hoteliers, who our attractions and who our restaurants are. But just as an example, uh, the Burlington Marriott will be signing on soon. Uh, I just got notification that Chelms, uh, Moonstones in Chelmsford is very much interested in hosting our membership, as well as Cobblestones here in Lowell. The Inn at Hastings Park in Lexington, uh, I believe it's in April, will be hosting us. And I'll be sending out notification to our membership, extending the invitation. Uh, one of the things that we want to make sure that we're helping with is that, yes, these locations will be hosting us and that it's our responsibility to bring our membership to them. Uh, but one of the things that we work with is that we would be charging a $5 admission to the door to help offset any of the costs to them. And some of the locations that I'm working with right now, at first they were hesitant on it. And then in conversation with them, they said, you know what, I'll tell you what, uh, we will provide the food and the staffing to allow you to host it. And it would be a cash bar, beer and wine would have you from 4.30 to 6.30. And we're working either with a Wednesday or a Thursday so that we're not um, interfering with any of their business flow. Uh, so some of them, Yes, um, they will provide uh, both the food and beverage, but some of them, because of them still coming out of difficult times, it's our ability to help them uh, and that there would be a cash bar for a couple of hours. And I think that, that sounds fair enough to them. Um, the other areas that we're looking at is uh, the Neshoba Ski Area, and then the Hilton in Woburn um, has a brand new, I think it's called Matador um, Bar it, Restaurant Area that they're very much uh, and promoting. And the one thing that we got to remember, the key thing is, is that the, they need to get people into their locations. They need to get promoted. And this is our ability to reach out to them and make sure that, you know, we're doing our part to uh, get into these locations to make sure that they're promoted and that uh, people are learning about them. We're also putting together the downtown low walking map and dining guide. Um, hasn't been put together since 2018. Uh, unfortunately, yes, the the um, Electra Stadium, the ballpark is still closed, but we're working strongly with uh, Major League Baseball and trying to find a farm league team that would be interested and help reopen that. Uh, the Lowell Summer Music Series will be coming up, uh, but this is a, a great piece. You know, the one thing that we can't forget is that, you know, we've got uh, Middlesex Community College here. We have the um, certainly the UMass Lowell and uh, are, which are two locations that literally ignite uh, the city of Lowell uh, when the students come back. Uh, so this is a great piece that we're working with the hotels, the restaurants and the attractions and put these into those families that come back during the times when the schools are in session and even when they're not in session. Uh, but uh, the restaurants and the hotels are uh, happy to know that we're putting this back together and again, hoping for a spring release of this particular piece. And then, of course, uh, we've got here in the greater Merrimack Valley, we have so much of the national parks, right, both in Lexington and Concord and the surrounding areas and Lowell here as well with uh, the national parks. When we participated in a couple trade shows, one that we participated in Washington, D.C., I believe it was, no, forgive me, Cleveland. Uh, with the National Tour Association, which is the uh, bus tour operators. Uh, this was a piece that we sponsored because we were also a sponsor for the national parks at the trade show. Uh, I had made mention about EF education. Uh, we just recently did this and something that we're hoping that we do a lot more of, of what's quote considered fam tours and reaching out to those that can benefit from uh, coming into this direction and learning about stuff that they had no idea about. A little backtrack, I spent probably my last six years with the Burlington Mary Hotel and EF Education, if you're unaware who they are, uh, when you drive into Boston and you're going over the bridge and the Boston Garden is in front of you, if you look to the right, uh, you'll see a big glass building and you'll see these letters on it, EF Education. This is one of their main campuses. They have probably about four buildings there. And when I was at the Burlington Merritt Hotel, I probably secured somewhere in the vicinity about 2,000 room nights with them annually for academic student travel that was coming into Massachusetts. And of course, you know, their route, whether it be going into Boston, down to Cape Cod or vice versa, or we're in a good central location. But one of the things that I want to make sure that they learned about, certainly, obviously, is the Aloft and Element hotels that are there in Lexington, but also um, 
you know, Lexington, absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful brand new visitor center. And of course, Concord as well. Again, that whole theme of, you know, two locations, one visit. Both had um, done a beautiful job on the renovations. And then of course we have our boot mills, which again, forgive me, I didn't go to it during my high school uh, trips, but I would highly recommend if you haven't been to the boot mills here in Lowell, um, one of the big things that is being pushed into the academic travel is the STEM education, um, where that they're trying to engage the students into an interactive education and uh, what I found is that EF Education had no idea about the brand new visitor center and all the great outdoor um, activities in and around Lexington. Uh, they did a little bit, but then also certainly conquered it in their brand new museum as well. And tying in the boot mills and the education that can happen from there. And it was an awakening. And I think Katie can attest to this is that, um, Again, learning about the third floor on the boot mills and the STEM education that they have going on in there is phenomenal. So uh, EF Education, had, we had a fam tour. We did a beautiful lunch over at the uh, Colonial. We met with the decision makers. And I am confident that we're going to see a lot more travel and a lot more buses parked in the center of Lexington making their way through Concord into the boot mills here in Lowell. Um, and so this is more of the academic travel that I focused on. And my next FAM tour, I want to do also a little bit more of the senior travel, those that are coming in to do what I call the leaf peeper season, our September and October. But this was a big push for us and uh, will constantly be a big push and making sure that we're getting these decision makers into our region to see uh, everything that has to offer for them to bring the academic as well as the senior travel into our markets. And it's all about them getting off the bus and utilize, get into the retails and get to the restaurants as well, right? So I had me mention also about, um, we're also very much tuned into uh, trade shows and making sure that we're getting to the decision makers. Now, remember, I talk about academic and student travel, but also um, it's the corporate, it's the, um, the associations and the corporate travel uh, organizations as well. You know, uh, over in the Waltham area, we've got a big audience of uh, pharmaceutical. So we participated into an uh, event that was hosted over at the Boston Park Plaza Hotel called Destination East. And that was back in October. And that was comprised of your corporate meeting planners, those that are looking for locations that um, they could host, whether it be the small meetings and the large meetings. The large meetings right now are still in rebirth mode. They're in a reboot mode. You know, they're nowhere near what they used to be because of the more of the Zoom uh, type of meetings like we're doing now, but the in-person meetings are coming back. They're the small stuff, but we're trying to make sure that we're making sure that they are well aware of all the different locations that these meetings can go to. Um, Travel Exchange in Cleveland, um, which is otherwise known as the National Tour Association, which is the tour operators, the bus tour operators. Um, this was more lean towards the senior travel and making sure that they understand uh, the destinations that they can reach and learn about everything, whether it be from history and or uh, more of the national parks as well. That is a big change. I think um, I was talking to uh, Beth Williams, who is on our board for Concord, and you probably experienced the same thing, that as soon as that spring season came around, they, especially for a lot of the outdoor venues, for obvious reasons, they never seen such an influx that came so quickly and so fast. Connect EC was another association corporate trade show that focused on medical and technology in the marketplace, which was in Grapevine, Texas, Texas that just happened this past January, uh, which is otherwise known as ABA or the American Bus Association. Again, it's those buses that we're trying to make sure are educated on what the Greater Merrimack Valley has to offer. Uh, and again, we are a major sponsor at that show. In June, I'll be going to IPW, which is the mothership of the trade shows. It's everything. It's all these trade shows combined and that being Orlando. And we'll be representing the Gary Merrimack Valley. And the, fat, the last one I had made mention, which is CIDA, which is heavily sponsored, believe it or not, by Walt Disney for obvious reasons. But that'll be in Washington, D.C. And I've probably have been attending that trade show for the past seven years now. And uh, many of those decision makers are already reaching out to us. One of them is a big Canadian tour operator that I probably secured about 2,000 room nights with uh, annually. And I do know that they're very much uh, interested in the Greater Merrimack Valley and bringing them 
uh, into our fold and making sure that they understand everything that we have to offer. So yes, we've got a heavy participation. So it's physically getting to those locations and representing accordingly. Uh, I made mention that uh, there's a number of events that happen in and around uh, the Lowell area. We've got Winterfest coming up. Uh, there's a very heavy sponsorship to that. Uh, also, I had made mention about Jack Kerouac, and I'm saying that correctly now, uh, which is an author-sponsored event coming up this year. And uh, U.S. Rowing on the Greater Merrimack, excuse me, the Merrimack River, uh, which is coming back in May, uh, which we're also starting to do a little bit more lean to on the sports as well, because that seems to be a big draw into our area as well. So we're trying to keep as diversified as possible. Um, some of our campaigns that we're running for the remain, remain of the, the season, of course, Black History Month. Uh, we're focused on that, making sure that we're communicating the Women's History Month in March, Pride Month in June, and then June, Juneteenth celebrations, which work on local community groups and sponsor block parties uh, and all the events that are transpiring during the outdoor time as well. So now, as I kind of conclude the presentation, we get into the statistical information. I will try very hard not to have everybody go into that glazed look as I start to present the numbers. But I reached out to the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism. And one of the things I want to get a better understanding of is, you know, how has this impact um, the, us against the state of Massachusetts first? And one of the key uh, elements that we look at is this term in our industry called REVPAR. So REVPAR revenue is a, a tool that many hotels utilize. It's per available room. It's a performance metric that hotels use that basically tells them how they're doing uh, against uh, whether it be last year or against their region that they operate within. There's no secret. 2019 was a stellar year, right? Uh, our blue uh, column there. Uh, hotels were seen you know, RevPAR's rates around $90, $91.81. Um, it was a fantastic year. Uh, and uh, we, we did a fantastic job of uh, everything that was going on. All right, the world stopped, right? 2020, 62% uh, current year 2019 in comparison. And what we try to do is uh, same time uh, last year. And if you're looking at 2021, um, it's coming back, uh, $60.11, um, still a third lower than 2019, but progress is being made. And this is a lot of what we're all about. And again, I utilize the hotels as a metric because you know, if people are coming to hotels, it's, um, it's a measure of them impacting the economy itself. The and forgive me, I may have jumped one slide. I'm going to backpedal a little bit. Uh, this is the state of Massachusetts against the Greater Merrimack Valley. The next slide is how Lexington and Concord combined against lodging uh, from 2019, 2020, and 2021. Um, again, it's incrementally we're getting there, but statistically, yes, it's still going to be a struggle of getting back to 2019 levels. And it's a lot about all of what we're doing um, in regards to making sure that we're getting the decision makers into the eyes of the buyers so that we're competing with Boston, Worcester, Springfield, and all the locations around us. If they're there, we need to be there. If they're not there, we're one step ahead of them. This is probably one of the best slides that uh, kind of gives you a good snapshot of how everything rolled out. This is the economic impact of uh, domestic travel. Uh, the Greater Merrimack Valley from 2019 to 2020, and against the sources, uh, USTA. Uh, the metrics is spending. It's uh, the spending represents that overnight guest. Again, yes, you know, 2019 was a stellar year. Uh, there's the numbers right there in front that explains it, and then of course uh, 2020. Um, but the thing that we need to understand is this is the Greater Merrimack Valley against um, the state of Massachusetts. Yes, we fell, but Massachusetts fell 55%. We were 49%. So we did better than the whole state of Massachusetts. The Greater Merrimack Valley did hold. It's not great, but job supported 8,000. Current year 2020, 5,800. Again, we fell, but we didn't fall as hard as all of state of Massachusetts. State taxes generated. Again, uh, we, we didn't do so great there. Uh, but yet again, state of Massachusetts, we didn't fall so hard. So 
you know, there's, there's pros and cons and, you know, the numbers can be directed many different ways, but local tax is generated. Uh, again, 29.3 million in 2019, 17 and 2020. Again, we fell, but against the state of Massachusetts, we didn't. Uh, our biggest struggle is bringing back the international traveler. As the CDC guidelines and everything else, travel restrictions um, become, um, uh, as they begin to lift, it's gonna get better. But yet that's one of our biggest tra uh, struggles is bringing back the domestic travel. We're seeing healthy gains in that, but the international travel is gonna be our biggest struggle in bringing them back um, based on pandemic situations. It's getting better. Uh, I did hear on the news this morning that I, I always find a, an interesting metric to listen to is Walt Disney. They're beginning to lift their restrictions. So if Disney's lifting their restrictions, we're going in the right direction. And I think a lot of that has to certainly do with the time of the year. And of course, vaccines, um, as those get more widely distributed, uh, we honestly believe that we'll be in a better place. So, um, you know, I'm gonna close down again, you know, uh, the, as we say, the adventures await us, and um, I'm open up to any questions or statements or anything that anybody would like to elaborate on. This is awesome, Rick. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I have I have a couple of questions to start us off. I think one of the things that we toss around in Lexington, in particular, is how much of how much are people drawn by history versus how much are people drawn by what's going on right now um, or, or more current? You know, you mentioned that um, arts and culture are bringing a lot of people to the region. So what, what do you see as the mix um, of sort of the history tourists versus people touring for other reasons? You know, uh, one of the, as I've gone to the trade shows, uh, it's all about be having them become familiar with uh, certainly the greater Merrimack Valley. Um, one thing that I found is that, um, and I'm gonna address that question specifically, that if I say, have you ever heard of the greater Merrimack Valley? And I'm going into the town halls or, or in uh, the convention visit bureaus, and I mentioned them and they're like, who? Uh, so there's kind of like, a, I wrap my arms around it. Um, I first start with the greater Merrimack Valley because it's what we represent, but then I narrow down and understand get an understanding of what is what is what is the crowd that they're trying to move you know if it's a tour operator that has academic travel well it's all about history right uh, and and yet if it's more of the senior travel there's certainly that mix of history but the senior traveler is a little bit more savvy and they want to be certainly learning about the history of Lexington and the surrounding areas but also, they're also glued into the arts and culture too. So I cater my response based on what is it that they're looking for. Uh, and, you know, I mean, if it's on the academic side, yes, it's the culture and arts as well, but I typically would be uh, catering our response based on what the needs of the person or the organization that's looking um, at the destination that they're traveling to. And that's more specific as if I'm at the trade show and responding to them or to a direct call in or inquiry, but again, one of the things that I want to make sure coming into the position is I want to make sure that we're represented as a, a four season destination. I don't want them to get off track and not say, oh, I don't want to go to Lexington during the winter time. I want them to come to Lexington during the winter time, especially if there's something arts related in culture. I think that there's um, the arts umbrella organization, which is over in uh, Concord that are, that are coming on board with us. But that is, you know, the arts and culture is a big draw, not only for the younger audience, but also for the senior audience as well. Uh, and there is also, I just, um, I was just exposed to the, the one who did the um, Webster, I think his name is, that was the designer for the Lincoln Memorial Monument. Uh, National Geographic is coming into our area because of, um, I believe that that artist was local or the designer was local to the area. So you know, that's something like that, that we want to jump onto. If National Geographic is going to do some kind of spotlight on, on our local um, uh, artist and uh, designers or whatever that is associated, we want to make sure that we're on top of that and we're gaining as much exposure uh, into that arena. And again, and again, the restaurant week, you know, that's something we want to make sure that, you know, people that are over in Acton are coming to Lexington, that the people in Woburn 
uh, coming to Lexington. You know, again, Sunday, I live in Westford, but I'll be honest with you, I'm getting kind of tired of the restaurants in Westford. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I go, I come to Lowell, I come to Bedford, I go to Lexington, and you know, there's some great restaurants in those areas. So that's all about kind of educating everybody that, you know, again, yes, we're a three season location. I design our response based upon what the individual is looking for, but also make sure that everybody's learning about everybody's destination. Thank you. You all. So we are, um, we're pretty much at the end of our time, but I want to give a chance if anybody has other questions or comments um, to uh, do that. Can I? Hey. Yeah, please. Oh, Rick is my neighbor in Westwood, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure. We keep it close to the family. <laughs> we got that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this, this was great. A lot happening. One of the things that uh, that you mentioned about the EF tour and you know Katie and Casey um, joined the tour. One thing that I learned from from that is uh, you know when they came back, they were so surprised. There's so much going on in other towns, and I was wondering if you know Greater Merrimack uh, Valley CVB is trying to promote that um, that connections between the towns because you have this huge network. And and this is what I've learned through COVID-19 is that the more we collaborate with other towns, the better we are able to uh, market ourselves as, as a region. So I was wondering if, um, you know, in the future, you'll, you'll be hosting some, some tours wherein, you know, internally we could actually go and, uh, and visit these uh, wonderful, you know, other assets that are there in the, in the greater Merrimack Valley, because um, honestly, it's not, the experience that you get in Lexington may be unique, but at the same time, we learn what are the new technologies that that other folks are, you know, investing in. What what's something that that we as a region need to improve on? And similarly goes to the next point is you travel a lot. Honestly, as a town, we don't get as a municipality, we don't get to travel a lot. So if you could bring that knowledge back and give us kind of, you know. Um, a rundown of this is what is happening in Texas. This is what is happening in Florida. You know, when you go to a visitor center in Florida, this is what you see. They have these cool gadgets or something of that sort. Like, I'm I'm going to the nitty gritty of it, but basically, kind of doing like end of the year um, fr lessons learned or something of that sort that will really help all all the the towns and municipalities. So two ideas over there, but I'm just wondering if you're thinking on those lines. And it's it's interesting you should say that because uh, one of the organizations that I was associated with in Boston called BAG, B-A-G, which is the Boston Attractions Group, and I'm hoping to start that here in the greater Merrimack Valley. And those that are um, part of this organization, you know, back in Boston, it was like Fenway Park, uh, the museums, uh, and these are all the attractions. And that's a focus of mine for 2022 is that um, I'm, I'm gathering the national parks, um, certainly, you know, the museums and the locations and the visitor centers. And again, sometimes we don't have to overthink how easy this is. And it answers more of your question, Sunday, is, is that um, it's amazing the synergy that happens when you start to connect uh, these organizations together. Uh, and what we would typically do is that we would grab these attractions and we would take, uh, we get a sponsorship bus and we'd go to New York City and we'd meet with, uh, in one location, um, the decision makers, whether it be meeting planners or, or uh, travel organizations and um, have them connect with those decision makers so that when they come in this direction, they have a point of contact to go to instead of, you know, Google calling the organization and thinking, okay, who do I talk to? And it's amazing that um, it's the relationship that's gonna be forged out of that, uh, whether they, we're hosting it in this direction or we're going to them. But that's something that I'm building upon right now that uh, eventually, again, just to keep it simple, uh, it's gonna be the attractions and whether we hop in a bus and we go to that destination and host something in that location so that we go to those decision makers or we bring them here, uh, and it's, it doesn't have to be overthought, but it definitely um, goes into much of what you're talking about of learning what's going on in those areas and, and educating and making sure. And, you know, sometimes it's as simple as that open house that I'm trying to get established um, and bring in everybody from our hotels, our restaurants and attractions to get this to building upon that synergy to let, you know, the Northeast and the South know that New England's open. And I think they're going to be opening up the state house soon too, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> which is good news. Yeah, yeah. 
thank you again so much, Rick, and thanks to all of you for being here. Um, I think this is a great presentation and a really great way to kick off this series. Yeah. So, and I've got good news. It's 32 days until spring <laughs> <laughs> and 21 days until spring training for the Red Sox. So we're almost Excellent. through this cold weather. <laughs> I oh, think I think we know better than that, Rick. We know, we all know <laughs> that the, the advent of spring doesn't mean warm weather necessarily. In New <laughs> True <England>. New Englanders. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, up, and I'll just put in a plug that our next speaker um, lined up for March is Jay Kaufman, who is a former state representative. Um, he now leads a group called the Beacon Leadership Collaborative, and he's going to be talking about leadership through challenging times. Um, so I think a very timely topic for us, um, and that'll be in March. So stay tuned. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank Great you. Thank you, everybody. everybody. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Erin. Thank you. Bye. Bye.